It's the time in the show when we get a check on the markets. The dip in corn prices has come a little early this year. Hear why that is. Is there work going on behind the scenes to secure a new trade deal with China? And this week's analyst says basis is hot, hot, hot. We'll find out what that means. This week, I sat down with Doug Simon, a commodity broker with Trados, and got his answers on a wide range of topics. The U.S., we were 6% planted last week, which is about half the typical pace, and beans were 2% planted, which is about half the typical pace. I've got farmers in Nebraska that are progressing pretty well, and I've got others that are just you know, finishing up field work so they can start planting. You know, we had some rain here in Nebraska last week, which probably, or earlier in this week, which actually probably helped some guys. But uh, it's just one of those years where everybody said it's just a really weird start because we, we did have the floods, we had snow, we've had rain. And so we're, we're just, we're, you know, probably ahead of where we, where we thought we were going to be three weeks ago, though, because it has dried out and we've been able to move ahead a little bit. And Doug, we got corn prices dropping too. Why is that? Well, because everybody's going back to the fields. Like I was saying, three weeks ago, I think there was maybe a little concern we were going to be delayed a little bit. I think that's, you know, we're moving ahead, getting some progress there. And then also we just had more pressure, you know, I think because of the crops in Brazil and Argentina are pretty good. We're getting some export competition there. Uh, that, that's an issue. Uh, people have not seen anything happen on the trade deal. And so you're basically seeing the funds continue to, to sell and pressure the market and, and move it lower as we go into first notice day on the May contract. You see any rebound anytime soon? Well, when you look at historical prices, you look at the April, you know, kind of seasonal patterns, there tends to be a little positivity from April into, into May. I mean, we've had such a dramatic fall off. I'd like to kind of look at markets that revert back to their mean. Maybe we'll get a little bit of a jump back up. But, you know, if we do get some type of a jump up, we want to make sure that we're kind of, you know, make, make sure we're selling. From a marketing standpoint, basis levels right now are very, very, very strong. I think I've made comments to you that are hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah, so there's the levels at Columbus and Blair are 10 over the May board. And we're going to roll into July next week, and there's nine cents a carry. And so I'd, I'd expect those basis numbers versus the July to firm up a little bit more. Uh, there's no ownership out in the country by the commercials. Uh, the farmers have got it in the bin. Uh, the funds are short, but uh, usually with those commercials being that big of you know opposition, Big, such extremes, there's usually some, some short covering at some point, uh, but we'll have to see if that actually happens. And we got soybeans about planted about 1% nationwide. Current outlook there, what do you see? Well, the soybean side of it really is still resting on what's going on and you know the, the trade yeah. you know, talks and hopefully we'll get something going there, but there's not a lot of optimism about soybean prices. You know, we're, the weather, given the fact that we're you know, moving ahead, you know, I think there were maybe some worry that we'd plant more beans because we wouldn't maybe plant corn but you know now we're really not we're going to get planted it looks like it doesn't look like that's going to be a big issue we're going to have a lot more bean acres and you touched on trade a second ago i was reading some articles where it was talking about maybe a little bit of optimism when it comes to china what do you think well there's not as much stuff coming from the president right now but behind the scenes with uh, mnuchin and leitner and lightheiser and uh, you know, Greg Dowd, you know, different people are in, involved in administration. I think behind the scenes, they seem to be working pretty diligently. The other big deal is the Trans-Pacific you know, Pacific Partnership that didn't pass. We, we need to be taking some actions there in terms of making sure we're doing those bilateral work with Japan, but with all the trading partners in Southern Asia, Southeast Asia, um, because our export competitors from Canada and Australia are very aggressive there and, and picking up market share there. And so that's important to us longer term as well. And about 10 days ago, roughly 90 U.S. ag organizations signed a letter uh, urging a trade deal between the U.S. and Japan. Looks like a deal on both sides is they're wanting to get it done. What do you think? Well, I think, you know, our, our farmers and the ag organizations, obviously, because they feel like, I mean, China um, is a big deal for us on the soybean side, but Japan is, is a large, you know, one of the top two importers of corn, import beef. And uh, you know Australia is hitting the beef, you know the beef market and the wheat market, and so yeah, we definitely want to be able to push that ahead and be able to do some things there. And what else are you tracking internationally? It looks like uh, African swine fever going to lessen the Brazil soybean exports to China. You know that's a big deal. It's really hard to get a you know handle on what's you know with China with the you know state controlled news agency in terms of what's coming out of there. Foreign Ag Service had some numbers I saw that they said the herd would be down 19 percent, which wasn't as aggressive as maybe some of those 30 percent reductions. They've got a massive amount of hogs over there. they the, that same Foreign Ag Service thing said that their pork production was only going to be down five percent, which. That's somewhat encouraging for them, but it looks like that'll help us with our pork exports, probably help with beef exports, and if we ever get a trade deal going, 
I mean, I think there's opportunities for ethanol there. Um, and their actual corn consumption in China was kind of interesting. Between their food and their seed and their industry uses, they're actually going to increase year over year. And so uh, actually they'll have a in net increase in consumption there. They're going to lose some to the hog side of it, to the feed side of it, but overall that's, that's a little more encouraging from maybe the per, you know, popular perceptions about China. And you mentioned earlier basis, it's hot, hot, hot. Any other marketing or risk management tips that you want to leave us with today? One of the things we look at corn is selling on a seasonal time frame and selling over increments, you know, in the springtime, hopefully, you know, you know, by the time you get planted and then into June. So even though prices are lower here, if we do get some type of rebound, you've got some sold, you want to look at maybe averaging those prices together. One of the big things going on right now is when you look at spreads out into 2020, the Dece corn today is at 375, it gets back up to 385. Carries between that Dece and the March could get out toward 20 cents. So if you got a 385 and at 20 cents of that be 405 the Dece, or that would be 405 versus the March, that's still a pretty good price. So you need to be looking at those opportunities, you know, if we have any rebounds, it gets more priced on new crop, both the corn, and then also looking forward to the beans here at some point too.